Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. Podcast! Not, a, not exactly sure what number episode this is going to be, or... <laughs> this was spontaneous. If this is a mini-sode, or what, Episode... But spontaneous. <laughs> Episode spontaneous. We're reviewing something interesting today, something that's not really kind of out there yet. It's the La Gloria Cubana Siri R Esteli, the first La Gloria Cubana produced in Esteli. First go. Uh, yep. So that's the band right there. It's a cool looking star. black beautiful, band. Beautiful looking star. I'm really looking yep. forward to this. A couple minimal veins on it. You can see the sheen on it there, so you got a nice sheen. I am your host Brandon Luna, and this I'm is Randy, Randy Rankin. 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 And we are at the Calypso Cigar Review. No, we're not. We're not. We're on the clip on the Calypso Cigar Cigars Review review podcast. for the podcast. But we're at an I'm undisclosed, still the undisclosed location. location. Where are we? Because we had to do something. No one knows. Off-beaten. We know. Come on. We know, but you don't. I don't know why it's a ghost thing. I have no idea. I'm burying this with coffee and bullet. Bullet bourbon. Here's bullet the bourbon. Bourbon. It's a very frontier. It's called frontier whiskey, actually, is what it's called. Most of that's been drunk today. <laughs> that's that's Dude, our that day so far. Half hour. That was in a half hour because I just opened it. We are lush. drinkers. You're a lush. I'm a lush. Whatever. No, I'm a bigger lush, but I'm just letting you know that you're a so, lush, too. To give you some idea of what this cigar is, I've cut it, have not lit it yet. He's I'll, lit his. We'll what do you home. got so far? Pepper. You're wrong. Okay, here's what it says. <laughs> This is the see, I told you I'm a face actor. Just see how just the detail. Hmm? The wrapper is uh, Jalapa Soul from Nicaragua. Okay. The binder is Nicaraguan. The filler is Nicaraguan. We're talking about uh, average price of six dollars and fifty cents. Ring gauge fifty four, length six inches. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to read off the uh, the flavor wheel here, or Why do you not? want to wait? Why not? Okay, this is from StogiesOnTheRocks.com, which is a great site. Stogies on the rocks. Stogies on the rocks. Ain't no big surprise. Ain't no big surprise. That's for our Neil Diamond fans. Yeah. Blow it right in your face. <laughs> All right. Anyway, half our listeners are like, "What the who is fuck Neil was Diamond? that shit?" Yeah. What who is the, Neil Diamond? Who the fuck is Neil Diamond? You guys are old. Neil anyway, Diamond so rocks. it's saying it's saying that it's creamy, with a woody flavor, earthy, high on the spice, mm-hmm. high on the sweet, and floral notes. Hmm. I'm not getting sweet at all at the moment. I just started, but boy, I'm getting full blown spice. And that retrohale spice will make your nose tingle and will make your hat hit the microphone. It's that's incredible just, how that's it just, does that. That's just fucking you. Oh, is that me? I'm sorry. I just saw it happen. Thought it might be the cigar. I don't so know. So the cold draw, I'm getting a little sweetness to it. I got no sweetness, but a little that spice. Could yeah, it could happen. Yeah, it's definitely sweet on the cold draw. Whiskey. I'm going give to it give it a torch here and see what's what with my, my, Alec Bradley three torch lighter. That's the one. Look at this lighter. This lighter is a piece of shit. It's like fucked well, beyond it belief. Looks like look, it looks shit. like a piece of shit. It's but like does it all. Work? Does it work? It works then awesome. It's not a piece of so shit. if you can get, if you like Alec Bradley cigars, and you see a deal where it's like, you know, a bunch you of cigars, a or and, and you, you get, get this the lighter, do it. it is worth it because this lighter is freaking awesome. Three torch <laughs> lighter. And if you have a chance to drink bourbon. Drink it, see? But that, we're putting the good. bourbon next to the fire, which is bad, so don't do that. No, don't do don't that. Don't do that. But, back to Neil Diamond, he rules. Turn on your hot lights! You know, that was about E.T. That was a fucking horrible song, I'm sorry. No, as much as Neil Diamond rules, yeah. Turn on your heart light is, is a, a bad song. song. He's like, I want to write a song for E.T., because E.T.'s popular. I don't <laughs> know why I made Will Neil Diamond sound like no, that. Yeah. No, Farrell, the, the Will Ferrell Neil Diamond is yeah. freaking awesome. <laughs> Did you ever Remember see the one time where... when we were on the road and you killed somebody and yep. you hit him in the desert? You're like, <laughs> why would you tell that story, Neil? Yeah, it was a good time, man. But uh, no. Neil Diamond, underrated. Younger folk need to pay attention to the movie. Check out the old Neil Diamond. Watch that movie, uh, Saving Silverman. Yes, great movie. <laughs> one, you get to see Amanda Pete and uh, Amanda Detmer. Weird that two, a movie would have two Amandas in it, but they did, and they're both babes. Plus, you get to see Jack Black and Arlie Ermey, mm-hmm. Steve Zahn. That's a funny movie. Great movie. Yep. Great movie. So, first off on this, I'm getting a little bit of spice. Um, it's a weird kind of a... I can't place the flavor yet. I'm not getting sweet yet. And I'm certainly not getting any tropical or whatever that said. But uh, I'm getting a lot of spice. But not pepper spice. More of a... Uh, uh, what kind of spice would I call that? 
It's not hot spice. It's just zesty. Yeah, it's a zesty. It's, it's a zesty, zesty spice. Is what it is. It's almost like a. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna go. Shit, I can't even hold a cigar. <laughs> You saw it here on the Clips of Cigar. <laughs> yeah, but good thing we weren't on video. Yeah. That would have been bad. That would have been totally bad. dropped his cigar. Did no, you totally fuck, no, did you fuck it up at all? No, or is not it good? at all. Okay. Not at all. Look, it's fine. Lucky. You're lucky. Um, I didn't drop it because we're not on video, so we're safe. We, we don't have to worry about the crap. Oh, we are? Yikes. See, there was that face eye thing again, dude. I told you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the retro hail is oh, No, I was just I ended up inhaling some of it. But um <laughs> sorry listeners if I totally blasted out your eardrums there. Um so far. I it's a halapa that. thing. I mean when you get the halapa yeah. you get a certain kind of spice. Yeah, and it's a, it's a it's like a salty spice. It's almost like um there's a Mexican salty spice. I'm trying to think what it is. I can't it's like cilantro? No, it's not cilantro. It's oh, that's red. Like Mexican spice. I know. It's like a jicama, or I don't know. It's like a. It's like that. It's hard to explain. Oh, uh, Jello. Yeah, fucking Jello. What? Yeah, that's what, what, I are you, <laughs> what are you talking about, Jello? I don't know. I was just trying to come up with something to help. Move no, it's the, show uh, along. the the Mexicans. They have this spice that it's weird. Mexican candy is really it's a weird thing because yeah, like, I, and, and to be serious, I have had it and it and is. It, it's like that's not fucking candy. That's like spicy shit. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, like yeah. With Mexican candy, the few I've had, it's almost like you're eating a Reese's with a Red Hot yeah. mixed into it. And you're like, what is this? I'm it's wanting a tam- I got it. It's tamarind. It's like a okay. slight I got tamarind spice, tamarind. which is a weird thing to get from a cigar. But that's what I'm getting right now from this cigar. It's like a tamarind if spice. If you don't know what tamarind is... Go to go to the Mexican side of your town, <laughs> and go get a candy, and say I want a Mexican candy with tamarind, and they will give you this thing that looks. It's actually a it's actually a pit of a peach or a pear, or it, it's some kind of it's some some kind of not a pear. It's a, like a peach pit or some kind of pit, and it's it's they dip it in tamarind. Is it a Brad Pitt? No, it's not a Brad Pitt. Okay. that'd be really yeah. expensive. Yeah. But it's a pit, and you suck on it, and it's like a spicy. It's that flavor. That is what. And I'm if you getting. don't want to do that, follow at. Captain Funky Pants on Twitter and just ask him. Everybody ask him because he would love to just spend the next day answering the question of what tamarind is. Sure, why not? <laughs> That's what it is. I'm getting like a it's like a tamarind spice with a little yeah, bit of Yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying. And I like we bust each other's balls, but that was yeah. It's a weird. I mean, that's a totally fucking weird thing to get on mm-hmm. a cigar. But but I'm Mexican and I know what that spice tastes like. So that reminds me of that. And that's the whole thing about, you know, cigars and flavors. It's like, you know, you don't necessarily, I'm not going to necessarily get the f- same flavor that, from a cigar, the same mental connection mm-hmm. to that flavor that yeah. everybody else is going to get. There's there's certain things that everybody can kind of identify. Gotcha. There's chocolate. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, kind of a woodsy cocoa, thing. There's cocoa, coffee, coffee uh, baker's chocolate, you know, like a... Cedar. Yeah, there's that kind of stuff. But then there's the weird stuff that's like, I got butterscotch. Like, who the fuck gets butterscotch? Everybody, I've you know, never got butterscotch. Every, every once in a while, I could see a caramel, but not necessarily a butterscotch. Mm-hmm. I've never really gotten a butterscotch. I'd love I've to get a butterscotch. Minty, you know, like yeah. Dunhill almost had a minty finish yeah. a little bit. Exactly. It didn't but, taste like mint, but it kind of had that coolness in your That's the mouth. cool fucking yeah. thing about cigars is that yeah. you don't know what you're going to get. It's like yeah. a journey. It's like uh, you're reading a book for the first time. It's like you're watching a movie for the first time. You have no idea where it's going to go. And it's different every fucking time. You As know, you so. said, a cigar is like a movie. That's yeah. beginning, a middle, and end. It has characters and yeah. And, and sometimes you want to watch the movies over and over no, again. It sometimes have a you want to. Does it really have a soundtrack? What I said in a soundtrack probably doesn't have a soundtrack. Does it depends. It? I mean, we'll start smoking it. So yeah, being on video uh, is distracting. It is weird. It is it's distracting bug, it's me. Weird. And I'm loving it. Look at so the uh, look at the burn. I was so this, is, this is cool. Look at the burn on this. Yeah. It's not you know it's I've ashed, but I've got it's not razor sharp, but it's a great white ash and. You know, this is, is this a, who, who makes work. this? This is a, a general. general? Okay, so general cigar and Altadis. We have done too much general cigars. Altadis, Altadis. Altadis. Those guys get a lot of crap for producing cigars that are typically known for being Cubans, and there is La Gloria Cubana Cubans. Um, there is right. The yeah. problem, with, yeah, the problem with General and Altadis is that because they're mass marketing and they're mass production, they don't. Uh, very too far from the middle of the road. This they is, try to appeal to everybody. This is not but, 
a light cigar. No, this, this is, is the medium boldest, body. This is the boldest uh, general cigar I've ever had. Now there is another one that's a net cigar that's called the uh, series black. Mm. That's supposed to be bolder than this. Um, I think this is bolder. This is this Dude, is this is balls to the wall. It is flavor. balls to the walls flavor. Yeah. Uh, other than that Dunhill age, this might be my favorite general cigar so far. Period. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go, but right it's now it's pretty damn good. It. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, this is a ass kicker of a cigar. It's not a morning cigar. It's not the first cigar of the day, mm-hmm. unless you are a seasoned cigar smoker. Yeah. But it is a tasty nugget. Yeah, this is one of the best cigars we've reviewed in the last three or four weeks. I mean, I'm this thing so far is rocking and rolling. Yeah, you guys should carry this for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the retro hail is like all spice and, we gonna, and just we pepper. Gonna, and we weren't going to review it this week, but uh, Matt said, please review it. I want to know what you guys think. Did you get my visual? That's the, that's the retro I, hail. Yeah, I saw these things. Retro hail is like this. It's like... That's the retro hail. Wow. You almost look like a woolly mammoth. Yep. You're one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> it's like Patrick Predator. Well, you're like that anyway. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, uh, Matt said, uh, well, I want to know if I need to order it, so... Uh, this is the worst man in person ever. <laughs> he doesn't talk like that, but I'm going to no, keep doing that way. Well, make him sound uh, like does. A, just make him sound completely different. If you're going to do that, just be like, well, I need to know if I should order this. <laughs> oh, he's from Jersey, so I'll go. You guys need to tell me, man. Should I order this cigar? He didn't talk like that either, <laughs> but he is from Jersey, so that's where I figured I'd go with it. Yeah, but no, he he said. Uh, I know you guys are reviewing some things over the weekend. Blah, happens blah, to blah. Megatroids? Do I need to order this cigar? He's not the Pink Panther <laughs> thing on the... What was that? The uh, uh, I don't know. shit, the race thing? Yeah, the, 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 the wild, race wild race. I don't know what the fuck it's called. Who it's, cares? it's pink even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been some Megatroids. No, yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that's not in the Martian, but yeah, remember that Pink? Uh, he would announce... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, My even. P32 Space Modulator! <laughs> yeah, no. No, that's not, but yeah, I think, I think you should no, definitely... No, but Matt said... Matt said Please review this over the weekend so I can, because I have to call in an order on Monday, and I want to know if we need to get this cigar. So far, yes, Matt, order this cigar. I mean, unless it turns really sour the last, I mean, so far, it is a, a flavor blast. It's got a lot of leather, a little bit of earth at the beginning, spice. Spice, like. Nobody's business nobody's spice, business, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, you put a little pepper on it, mm-hmm. and then you smoke it. And, and then it's put like a jalapeno spicy. on top of yeah. that pepper. I mean, this is. Nice. And that retro hell clear sinuses, that's for sure. Yeah, it's that jalapa, man. Yeah. And uh, like we said, this is the first time General Cigar has done an Nicaragua Puro. Yep. So good for them. Yep. And, you know, like we've talked about, we've reviewed a lot of Alta this, this past year. But the reason why was they came out with some good cigars. You know, the uh, Trinidad Paradox, the... Uh, SLR Gen 2, the Vega Fina Master 2012, were all good cigars. So we reviewed them, even though they were Altidus and ooh, they're the evil empire. Well, the bigger evil empire is General. Yep. And we've, in the last month, have done a Dunhill Aged, which is great. Yep. And now we're doing this, which is so opposite of what the Dunhill Aged is. Yeah. I mean, total, and yet just, polar opposite. But just I mean. flavor. Blast. And it pairs really nicely with the coffee. I haven't really had much of the bourbon yet, but um, man, that is with the coffee. It's like a spicy coffee, yeah. yummy, good thing. So, have you had this bullet bourbon? I have had bullet bourbon. Yeah, the bullet rye yeah. a couple of weeks ago. The nose on this is really good. It's yeah. it smells like caramel. Actually, they they actually uh, you know we did the high west whiskey the last time, which was a a rye bourbon scotch combination. Yeah. This is actually bourbon, but they label it frontier whiskey. They do. Frontier whiskey uh, in the process and how they distill it. Front. What does that mean, Frontier? What's that mean? Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look it up on the internet. I thought you had an answer to this. This is going to be like a segment. What the no, it's, fuck? No, remember I did that last week when I did that mm. rock gut, how they make rock gut whiskey thing. But <sighs> it's That's very it. tasty. It's not, it, you know what? Here's the word. It's it's, it's unrefined. A little it's, a little, it's a little ballsy wallsy. Yeah, a little bit unrefined. I mean, it's not your Maker's Mark and your Woodford Reserve or your... Uh, Knob Creek, but yet it's a really tasty bourbon. Kind of yep. has a campfire taste to it, if you think about it. Yep, not as much as the campfire one we smoked, the uh, smoke drank, but um, yeah, it definitely has that. Uh, it's called Bullet Frontier, right? Bullet 
Frontier Whiskey. Okay, I got a review right here. Let's see what okay. the review says. And this is from Bourbon Enthusiasts. So they got to know, right? They got to know. Actually, I follow them on either Twitter or Facebook. Well, yeah, because you're an alcoholic. So let's see. Um, <laughs> it says the. Uh, Don't tell my secrets. <laughs> it's secrets. All right, so it says the nose on it is vanilla, cinnamon, and toffee. So I got a caramel. I can say toffee, yeah. Yeah, definitely toffee. Yeah. Um, it says that the taste is vanilla taste up front, followed by a nice oily fill in the mouth, hints of cinnamon flavor and sweetness. A bit dry. Yeah, it's dry and on the it's finish. sweet. It is dry and sweet. I don't get the vanilla. Another guy says oak, toffee, leather, and a sweet corn. And then another guy says, this guy's, what the fuck? Green apples, caramel, vanilla. Green apples? That dude's just a jack and awful. <laughs> yeah, that guy ate an apple and then took a drink of the fucking booze. What the hell? Uh, I'm getting cinnamon. I'm getting leather. Mm, I'm getting vanilla. I get the corn. I do totally get the corn. But it's bourbon. It's supposed to be corn. Mm. Okay, yeah. It's so as sweet as there's a, it's the it's the sweetness is the corn. And right? I yeah. can definitely taste it's like a cream corn mm. with a cinnamon. Oh, don't tell me that because I'm gonna get the runs. I like cream corn. Cream corn's good, dude. Yeah, but it gives a me good the cream runs. corn. It gives me the runs. Mm. So don't tell me that because mentally I will get the runs. But it's booze. You're gonna get the runs anyway. You ever heard of the bud muds? I mean, come on. This is booze. Oh, is that what I've been going through? Yeah, the bud muds. Yeah. Or I call them the muddies. That's why I take fiber vitamins. <laughs> so I don't get the mud muds. The, the Hershey squirts. The Hershey squirts, yeah. Front. No. Uh, I like it. I've, I, man, I was reading. I like to read. Uh, I, I'll call them dime store western novels. You okay. know, two hundred pages. They're filled with gunfights and hoopla and blah blah blah. Yeah. But there's a writer, and his name's escaping me at the moment. But, Louis uh, Lamore. No, 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 no. Much better. Okay. Much better. Uh, and he wrote this uh, series of books about a guy named Barjack. What is that guy's name? Damn it. Anyway, Barjack's the main character, and he drinks Bullet Bourbon. Now, I don't know if Bullet was around in the 1880s, mm -hmm. but uh, what is that guy's name? It's on the tip of my freaking tongue. Ra Robert J. Conley. Let's see if I'm right. I think it's Conley. He's a great writer. He, I mean, he writes just, it's bluff. But it's just something you can read in a couple of days, put you to sleep at night. That's the Have author or the character's name? Author. The character's Barjack. All right, so let's see here. Barjack and unwelcome. Uh, Barjack and the Unwelcome Ghost. Yeah, yeah, I've read that one. I've got okay. that book. It's an e-book. Is it Robert J. Conley? The Perfect Tonic for Princess Eugene. No, no. Who wrote it's not really Barjack a, and the Unwanted Ghost? Who let's find out, shall we? Barjack. What the fuck kind of name is that? Who thought of that shit? He's a funny dude, man, and he's got this girl, Bonnie Boodle, is this girl that works in the saloon that he humps. That's his hump patty. And he does anything wrong until I kick his ass all over the saloon. It's, they're good, funny stories. As luck would have it, it does not say who the author is. It is Robert J. Conley. I've okay. conjured it up in my head, and I'm more. As I am on most things, if you think about it. No. Okay, so... Little disclosure here because we hate non disclosure. Brandon and I might not be in the best voice because we just spent the last hour <laughs> singing Beatles rock jam or rock band. Yeah. And and that makes my, makes my voice way cooler, were. though. It gives my voice an extra level of coolness. It makes, it makes you sound like this. It makes me sound like the bad guy from movies or the movie trailer guy. In a world. In a world where one man sings Beatles rock band for five hours and loses his voice. Because Beatles sing like a bunch of ladies. Dude, they're high. They're Good singing. Lord. Are. Yeah, we sing karaoke, okay? Get deal with it. And we also smoke cigars and drink bourbon. So, yes, men can do karaoke. And we Fuck you, address that believe. Neil Diamond's actually great. So. Yeah. Dude. And he likes Barry Manilow. Hey, you like Barry Manilow. No, I don't. I'm just saying I do. <laughs> you like Barry Manilow. <laughs> Could It Be Magic was on the other day, and you were singing your freaking lungs out. I don't even know that song. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we prove that I am the more masculine dude, because I don't care. Yeah, yeah no. I like well, Barry Manilow. We, we grew up in an age that was a different age. Dude, in the 70s, you could hear Kiss. Yeah. 
followed by Barry Manilow, followed by the Bee Gees. But that was radio. Followed then. by radio. Van Halen. Radio wasn't the way radio. It wasn't is now. genre related. It, it wasn't. Was, it was like is it the, good? Yeah, we'll put it on. Exactly. So you had Kiss. You had like you said Barry Manilow. You had Bee Gees. You had uh, Led John, Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin, Elton John, all in the same Rolling radio Stone. station. And and you never thought anything about it. You were like, oh, that song rocks. Oh, that's a good ballad. Yep. Oh, that's a good pop song. Yep. Oh, that's a good rock song. Yep. Oh, that's a good ballad. Oh, and that's I, a good. Yeah. And I am one. You know, I'm old. I'm 43. And I I truly do believe that good music stopped pretty much mid 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still a couple of bands out there that I like that are bringing something different to the game. Yeah. I like White Stripes because I think that um you know Jack, that White, Jack, uh, Jack yeah, White yeah Jack White is a mm-hmm. very good musician has a lot of um, grounding in older music and he yep. brings that into the new music. Um, you know, I like Electric Six because they're just off the wall. I like Wolf Mother. I think Wolf Mother has that Zeppelin kind yeah, of sound. Yeah, but they have them. that old sound. So it's a lot yeah. of the bands that I like are the bands that sound like older bands. Yeah, and you know, one of the best bands of the last twenty years is easily Pearl Jam. I'm a, I would say I'm a huge Pearl Jam fan, but I'm interested in everything they do. If I hear a Pearl Jam song, I'm not necessarily going to like it, but I'm going to listen to it because I stopped listening. Good. I stopped listening to Pearl Jam pretty much after the second album. But, but I, they've done some good stuff since then, but I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. I mean, like I said, I don't have their whole collection and never will. But when I hear a Pearl Jam song, I'll stop and go, I don't know that song. Like, I Pearl think Jam. that might I be Pearl to... Jam in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Pearl Jam. There's really nobody that's tried to. Well, okay, the guy from Creed tried to do Pearl well, Jam. Yeah, Creed, like we said, should and... be named We Wish We Were Pearl Jam. Yeah. And Kinda like White Snake should be. We, we wish we were Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, he got to sing with fucking. Yeah, he got to sing with Plant. It was the, right, was it a right, Coverdale right, right, Coverdale page. Coverdale page. That's what I meant. God, yeah. I mean, how cool was that for oh, him? Yeah. He's like, I sound like Robert Plant. Kinda, kinda, kinda sorta. Yeah. And I'm dating her, married to a really hot chick. What was her name? Uh, she's a she got she's fucking really hot chick. Yeah. OJ uh, did her. OJ did her. Yes. What's her name? Did her with the evil dick. <laughs> <laughs> the murder of my wife, Dick. Oh, come on. I'll come up with that in a second. Oh, uh, when you yeah. look it up. Perils of Gwendolyn. Yes, she was in Perils of Watch Gwendolyn. That. In the land She's of the all yik, kinds yeah. of naked. Good Lord. Oh, what is her name? What was her name? In the she still was in uh, the hill, one bow, honey. She was in uh, Bachelor Party, too. All right, I gotta get, I look this up in one. Damn it. God, we are so rambling. How do people watch this? I have no freaking clue. Well, this is only the third time they get a chance to watch us. <laughs> How so are people listening to us? Might not ever... Uh, Watch us again. Perils of Perils Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Uh, Perils of Gwendolyn in the land of Yak Yak. Yik Yak. That was the name of the movie. Wow. Yeah. And her name is Tawny Katane. Tawny Katane. Good ding, ding, Lord. Ding, ding, How ding, stupid ding. are we? Yep. Tawny she was Katane. freaking hot. She was in a movie about a guy who was like the John Travolta thing where he was like the boy in a plastic bubble. You know what I'm talking about? Where he, yep. the student had this immune deficiency and he couldn't come out of this room. And yep. they have sex. Oh, and she's like pressing Have her boobs. Up again. Yes. Oh my God, that's mm. fucking hot. Thank you, Tani Katane, for Tawny making Katane. that movie. Now she was. Here's a funny story about her, and I'm going to touch the sports page here. She was married after David Coverdale. She married uh, Chuck Finley, who was a pitcher for the LA Angels, and got arrested because she kicked his ass. <laughs> she beat him up. I remember a hearing about that. Athlete, I remember a professional hearing about that. athlete who's making five, six million a year. Who, in case I failed to mention, is a professional athlete, and she kicked his ass and went to jail for it. <laughs> now, now you gotta wonder: Do you think it's because he's like, well, I can't hit a woman, probably, or because he's like, ah. <laughs> it's either way. It's just sad to know that a professional athlete let a chick kick his ass. Yeah. But to be honest, yeah, dude, I remember he, one he's time, probably better off getting his ass kicked than kicking her ass, and then going to jail for abusing yeah. a woman. Because so. I remember one time this. Uh, I was Crystal Crystal Heart was the name that of the movie. That was it. Yes, through the glass. Holy Crystal, crap. look up Crystal Heart. One of the also watch I've ever Perils seen of Gwendolyn. and uh, Angel. What was the no Witchboard? Witch Witchboard. She's Witchboard's a, actually a fun movie. It's a very good movie. It's a cool. It's a cool yeah. flick, and it's like a, it's a whole too. yeah Ouija board thing, and she's and like she's, uh, she's making that. Uh, and you know who's in that is the great Rose Marie from the Dick Van Dyke yep. Show. Yeah, but uh, back to the Chuck Family thing. I remember I'm like 15, 16 years old, and I'm shooting baskets in my friend's yard because he had a basketball hoop, and we didn't. Yep. So we okay. go to his house and shoot baskets. And I'm a good shooter. I can't do anything else. I mean, I can't do 
obviously can't dunk him, can't lay up very well. I'm short and blah, blah, blah. And white, and I can't jump. White but, man uh, can't jump. <laughs> can Mexicans? No. Okay. All right. Well, so we're both in the same boat. Before you but, get into no. the rest of the story, we do have to take a break. I was almost done. I had like eight seconds left. You got to wait. Story. We're going to take a break real quick, and we'll come back for the second third of the La Gloria Cubana Series R Esteli. That's called a tease. That is called a tease. So is this. You get the two finger. Wait. And then you get the Spock shock, oh, yeah, huh. shocker. Anyway, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back. We didn't do the lap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Oh, go. man. Oh, that story was great. <laughs> Too bad these guys can't oh, hear it. God. Oh, man, your daughter said that? Wow, that's funny. Anyway, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so the rest anyway. Of your, so start your story again. Sorry. I don't know why I did that. I'm wearing the Fuente hat now. I'm wearing the Oye de Nicaragua He's 420 hat. Leaf. Yeah. 420, man. <laughs> man dude, dude. Dude, the 420, man. man. You know, yeah. you, your hat's awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, this ch- I'm shooting baskets in this friend's yard, and this chick comes up. She's about a year younger than me, and I'm watching her, and she's like dribbling between her legs and <laughs> behind her back and doing all this kind of stuff. She says, uh, hey, let's play horse. And I thought about it for about 10 seconds and went, uh, no. She's like, why not? Let's just play horse. It's no big deal. I said, I have nothing to win here. If I win, I beat a girl. And if I lose, I got beat by a girl. <laughs> so I'm not playing. <laughs> and I didn't play her. And she was pissed off. I don't blame her. I know I probably shouldn't play her. But yeah. Why? Okay, how, old you? how old were you? 15, 16. And you couldn't have been like, if I win, you show me yeah, your boobies. Yeah, she wasn't worth that. And if I lose, you show Dude, me your she boobies. She could dribble basketballs between her legs. <laughs> she didn't have anything to look at. She was a jock. <laughs> yeah, sweet Georgia Brown playing going. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I make it a rule not to play against people that have sweet Georgia Brown. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's my, it's my theme music, that's motherfucker. My <laughs> yeah. Now, I'll play baseball, and I'll use Center Field by John Fogarty as my theme song, and I'll kick your ass. Let me in, coach. I'm ready to play. That's less than 30 seconds, right? We should be good. Probably. Okay. John Fogarty's an ass, though. He'll probably sue us anyway. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I smoke cigars, motherfuckers. I listen hey, to that John, shit. If any artist on the planet has a right to be an ass, it is John Fogarty. Yeah. Because no artist ever got screwed more by a record company than John Fogarty. He got sued by his own record for his own songs. Yes. It's like, hey, you made a sound. You made a song yeah, that sounds like sound your like other song. song, and so we're suing you. Or but I wrote it. Your own song. I, yeah. Yeah, but you stole from yourself, and we own your old self, so you can't <laughs> <Yeah>. do that. <laughs> and so for like ten years, they had this CCR, which was not the Calypso Cigar Review. No. The and not CCR. Cretans Clearwater Revival. It was Cretans Clearwater Revisited. And they could do all the Fogarty songs. And if you know anything about CCR, Fogarty wrote all their freaking songs. Every freaking CCR hit was written by Fogarty. But he got sued because the record company owned the songs, not him. So for 10 years, he couldn't sing the songs that he wrote. But CCR, you know, Clayton, Clayton's Clearwater Revisited, could tour around the country and do his songs. But he couldn't. He was banned Interesting. from doing his own songs. So if he wants to sue us, eh, dude, I'm on your side. I think you're the most screwed musician in the history yeah, of probably Yeah, you should probably instead sue Pedro Hilly. <laughs> yes, because we did Rock Around the Clock <laughs> on one of our episodes. And, so. and God forbid we use a song that his dad owns. Yeah, and his family owns. And yep. that they gave us permission to use. So. Yep. It's non-for-profit. It was just to... Get some history out there about the Dude, family. Dude, if you added all the money we've made from this podcast, you couldn't buy a damn thing. No, because we have made zero money. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Yep. This is all for fun. It's all for... It's all for you. the love of these. Yep. And this. And this. And, and, just what general and you guys. And just what general knowledge we like yep. this in part. In part. On part of our this partness. Dis in part or in part? Dis in part. In part. In part. Disseminate. Yeah. That's where this from was disseminate. I'm going to have a drink of my booze now. 
We've been drinking seconds. steadily pretty during the day, but it's steadily. Yeah, but it's, been, drink, it's but been in it, moderation, yeah. about two drinks an hour, so we're okay. Yeah. And we, we know, had steaks and potatoes. In between that, we had steak and potatoes, and we sang a bunch. So, yeah. And we played with the doggy. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Gigi? Gigi. <laughs> she is She's French. French. How come everything is French with you? I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe I was French in a down life. Who knows? His name is Brandon. <laughs> He's French. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brandon. I am French. <laughs> now... He did the crepe sauce. I've never had a crepe. Have you ever had a crepe? I've had a crepe. I've never had a crepe. Awesome. Crepes are delicious. You put fruit in them, and they're you put a little uh, cream on top. Like, are they kind of like pancakes? They're it's like a real thin, a thin pancake. pancake. Okay. With a little fruit, like uh, you put like you know real fruit in the middle. You yeah. Put a little bit of a uh, homemade whipped cream on top. It's pretty, it's pretty delicious. I was telling you last week off mic that I was in my twenties before before I ever got a bagel. I mean, my family was so generic white guy food. I remember asking okay, about so, a bagel uh, one time. Hey, I said, in. I said, I heard that a bagel was like a Jewish donut. <laughs> and my dad's like, no, it's not. It's not sweet. It's not. It's terrible. So what? What is what is generic white guy food? I gotta know. What did you guys? What was your daily okay. eat? We we had a because um, uh, I I envisioned macaroni and cheese. <laughs> well, okay, kinda. We had a schedule. Okay. Monday night was hamburger helper. Okay. Tuesday night was sloppy joes. Okay. I like sloppy joes. Monday too. I yeah. like Hamburger Helper, actually. It's not bad. <laughs> Wednesday was Spam. Wow. With macaroni and cheese. Uh, Thursday was... I would not uh, be at your house on Wednesday. Thursday, and me either. I have a, I have a story. Thursday was chili pie. Chili? <laughs> if you know what chili pie is, it's Fritos covered in chili with cheese. That's, that's a Frito, Frito pie. pie. Okay, that's a Frito, not Frito pie. pie but, okay. well, I like Frito okay. pies. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're better at a ball game. They're not good well, to eat for a growing family of sustenance. three boys. No, and yeah. Okay. And then Friday was cheap, though, so. Friday was we'd order pizza. Well, Saturday, you didn't have you didn't have fish on Friday? No. Heathens. I'm, okay. I'm <laughs> we can eat meat on a Friday. That's all right. All right. I even like steak on a Saturday. We had fish night. on Friday because we lived in Corpus and there was yeah. you know it was there. Uh, was my cheap. mom liked fish. Uh, I liked fish. My dad and two brothers. My did dad liked fish. Um, uh, I grew up Catholic and um. My dad Steven. was not very religious, and uh, so my mom tried to bring what she could of the Catholic religion into the house, mm-hmm. and it was basically ended with fish on Fridays. Okay. And it was because we lived where it was cheap, and they had having. But then, like you know, it was terrifying fish. It wasn't like regular because <laughs> it was what, crabs. Barracuda? No, it was okay. crab. It was crabs, and you have to put them in. You know, get them live and steam them, and they're like, and they scream, they scream, yeah. and they're dying. They make that noise, and you're like, ah. You don't just want to hear it. something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It sounds like the screen, but it's just the air escaping. I know, but it, but it sounds, sounds like, like holy screen. death. Yeah. It sounds like you know the the bowels of Mordor or something, and then you get to eat it. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was delicious. So. so yeah, Friday was pizza. Okay, we got to order pizza on Fridays because mm-hmm. that was family night, and that's when we would watch on TV. Do you remember that? On remember TV. before you had cable? Yeah, you just had regular TV, and there was HBO. It's the old. Some- it's the old time station. Yeah. We're talking about old times. Yeah, and you get the HBO box, and then be yeah. at your house, and you could watch HBO programs or Showtime or Cinemax, which ironically are all still around. We had on TV, which isn't around anymore. My parents also invested in Beta, so <laughs> yeah, so on, on TV okay. and Beta. But see, My Beta parents, was badass, but it just didn't. Uh, that's it didn't the, catch on. VHS caught on and beta. beta didn't. Okay, we're gonna go into a, a, a technological debate. Eighties technology. Beta, beta is the reason that you now have Blu-ray. Yep. And here's why. Beta was a better format. Mm-hmm. Sony did not have the money to put into the backing of it, mm-hmm. and it was a Japanese product. So mm-hmm. VHS was everywhere, and Beta wasn't. Mm-hmm. Beta was higher resolution. It was easier to edit. It was really a better product. It was smaller. Mm-hmm. Everything was better about it. The picture it. But was it, better. The picture was better. And when we got have, a VHS, better, we missed our beta. You had a better still frame. You had a better fast forward with beta. But it didn't catch on. So Sony lost their ass on beta. And when the Blu-ray high def DVD thing came about, Sony's like, fuck you. We're not losing this shit again. So they, they put a shit ton of money into Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. And they made sure that every movie studio out there was going to go with Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. But here is why HD DVD should have won. HD DVD can be produced at the same factory as standard DVDs. So all it is is a software upgrade and you can now make HD DVDs. So it's cheaper for them to produce them. Okay. HD DVD had all this cool stuff 
where you could have stuff popping up on the screens and yeah. you could have picture in picture kind and all like that stuff. Video. Yeah. Yeah. Blu-ray didn't have that. Blu-ray, the technology wasn't there at the time. So mm -hmm. HD DVD had that. HD DVD, the only thing it had negative going for it was that it was less storage space. Mm -hmm. So you had 30 gigs as opposed to 50 gigs. Guess what? Most movies, 11 gigs. You don't use all the space. It's yeah. there. It's wasted. Right. HD DVD, you could have a disc with a DVD on one side, mm -hmm. you flip mm -hmm. it, and there's oh, an HD, HD DVD on, on the other side. Yeah. And you can play it in any DVD player. You put it in, and you can watch that? the DVD. Sony no, this is, no, this is HD DVD. Okay, I'm sorry. So this HD DVD, you can put it in, you can watch the DVD side. If you decide to upgrade to HD DVD, guess what? You flip it over, you got the high def version as mm -hmm. well. Blu ray, nope, it's a different laser. You now have to buy a different player. Right. So not only was it less convenient for the homeowner, it was less everything, but Sony put a shit ton of money at it. They got the porn people, and they got Disney on board, and that's why Blu-ray won. So now that's why you're paying more for your Blu-rays, because now you have to get a Blu-ray combo set where it has the Blu-ray and the DVD, and they're separate discs. Instead of one disc where you can just flip it, and you got and both that's Sony's of FU because they failed with beta, so they decided to we're gonna throw all of our money at Blu-ray, and Blu-ray's gonna win. So Blu-ray won. And Blu-ray won. Well, you know what? Mm, I like HD TV videos. I mean, I've rented a few, and I like it. But I liked Beta so much that I'm glad Sony finally won. Yep. And I like PlayStation better than Xbox. So I like PlayStation better too. But you know, and and that's the thing. PlayStation Two was like the big deal, and then oh, yeah. Xbox came along, and Xbox took that market from them. So that was another reason why PlayStation Three was like, we're not losing with PlayStation Three. We're not losing with Blu-ray. We've already lost before. We've got to get right. Blu-ray to, to keep on. And, you know, it was funny because we'd have friends. And now Xbox is going to have Blu-ray. So guess what? Fuck you, Microsoft. Buy some <laughs> Blu-ray from Sony. <laughs> it's funny because we'd have... Uh, my mom was a... Not related to cigars at all, but guess what? This cigar is tasty. It's a great cigar. I'm on, it's I would like say the... Uh, I would say I'm on the second third. I'm on the second third, and it is just a powerhouse. I could... I, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. Unless it gets really bad the last third... This could be a go-to for me. It, it, you know what it's six... reminding me of, and this is going to blow you away. Okay. It's reminding me of the Tempest. Yeah, I could see It that. has some Tempest quality. I was going to say the Nick Apiro, but yeah, okay. Um, mm, it's got that aftertaste that the yeah. Tempest has. Now, yeah. The Nick Apiro ballot really is amazing. Don't yeah, it's a great, that's a great go-to for me. But I like the, the Nick Apiro. The reason why the Tempest is my favorite cigar is that I can smoke it 30 minutes later. Oh, sorry. Sorry, what? Uh, what were you doing? Were you, uh, <laughs> I was like, blah, blah, Tempest, blah. blah. Jacking off your hands or yeah. something? Or what? Yeah. Not, blah, 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 I'm Randy. I talk about the Tempest. <laughs> you like the Tempest. I do, too. I'm just Actually, fucking with you. Love you. I love the Tempest. It's a great cigar. And I love the Creo. That's like one of my favorite Lanceros. It's a great Lancero. Oh, probably the best Lancero ever made. But uh, well, I'm saying L40 reason, on that. But Well, the L40 doesn't exist in my world because mm -hmm. I've never seen but it. But you yeah, had one, one but and I don't you give a loved shit. it. Yeah, you had you loved it. Yeah, but I still think I would smoke a Creo over the L40. Slap your fucking face right now. I like Drew Estate. Do not get me wrong. And that Nuka, Nuka Rustica, I was very disappointed that I couldn't find a place in the top 10 for it. I put it at 11. I loved that cigar. I'm kind of curious if what they actually release is I'm that cigar really, because... I really hope it is. That's and, and what that's, makes me and, mad about Drew Estate. And that, honestly, that's why I have not ordered any yet. I'm yeah. waiting for you guys to get it. I want to try a so couple. See what it's like. See what it's yeah. really like. Because this UF-13, oh my God, it's the best thing ever. And then, and then they released it with a different cigar and it wasn't and it's like, that great. That's not cool. That's not yeah. cool at all. No, it's not. And uh, Anyway, you were saying about the, the Tempest. Go ahead. No, it has that Tempest after The yeah. reason... I fell in love with the Tempest. Was I smoked it one time, and it was like 30 minutes later, I was like going, "Dude, I still taste that cigar, and it tastes yeah. great." This is a I mean, and I've seriously, got the same thing. I've the got mouth this aftertaste with this. That the is, mouth feel on this is is fantastic. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like a it's a it's a sweet tobacco. Um, there's a little bit of earth, a little bit of spice, um, but I mean, just the mouth feel. When when you have a good cigar mm -hmm. and and you taste it later, it it's just that the memories come flowing back and it's like man I want to smoke another one of those I could see wanting to smoke another one of these right now like I like I could I would have and, and I've never hated La Gloria but I've never loved La Gloria I mean everything I've had's been oh that's good and yeah series in and stuff oh, good cigar but this one is actually blowing me away and this is a true unbiased opinion because we don't carry this yet no we don't no. we don't know Matt wanted us to smoke this 
to this find came, out if we this, wanted to carry yeah, it. Yeah, this came from the rep under some duress. This and, is um, a... <laughs> he didn't want to give Brandon one. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like, that? Mexican? I'm yeah. not giving a cigar to a Mexican. <laughs> I didn't tell him you were Mexican. Thank oh, okay. God. Or you wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> it's but... like, those guys cut yards. I'm not giving it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will recommend a Matt I don't to cut yards. pick this up. And I have Mexicans do it. Eyes are swollen. It's bad news. So you know what, I have a guy that's great. He's awesome. He does my hair. You know what Colonel Travis said to David Crockett when he saw the 5,000 Mexicans approach the Alamo? Better get some beans. No, the landscapers are here. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, well, oh, I got a story. I got a story I got to tell. I got a story I got to tell. Okay, so I moved. Oh, yes, I, I told a racial joke, okay. but I got a Mexican buddy. Yeah. I'm free. I'm clear. I'm clear. And it's, uh, the story I'm telling is kind of racial. So uh, I moved into this part. Uh, this I live in Frisco, Texas, which is a kind of highfalutin area in Dallas and um second it, you know, most credit card debt county in or a city in Texas. not me because I don't have a whole lot of credit no. but anyway so I move in I'm out there you know taking care of my yard I'm mowing yard blah blah cars <laughs> like how much you charge <laughs> yes guy stops his car guy stops his car he's like hey hey man how much you charge to do yards I'm like what he's like how much you charge I'm like dude I live here <laughs> He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I live in this house. It's my house. He's oh, like, that's oh. Not funny story. It's, no, he just rolled the. He didn't say anything. He rolled the window up and fucking sped off. <laughs> Dude, Larry David was love awesome. That. Yeah. Larry David and Michael Scott. I told my wife that she's like, ah! she's like <laughs> laughing. She's like, you should have told him like fifty bucks or a hundred dollars. You could have gotten some money for that guy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm I'm not mowing a fucking yard for that guy. Oh okay. my god. Yeah. Fucking Frisco. I love man. having a Mexican friend. I can say racial stuff and just say, hey, dude, I'm friends with a Mexican. I... Right. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm on the, the profiling list. list. I'm no, on the profiling yeah. list. Yeah. No. I'm on the profiling list. Come on. <laughs> I look like a hobby. Oh, this is so funny. Get... This is funny. I was in Annapolis, Maryland. I worked for a company. Or not, I was in Baltimore, Maryland. I worked for a company that's based out of Annapolis. And to get to Annapolis, you have to fly into Baltimore. And not trying to be profile or anything, but several people with turbans were just escorted through the security line. No big deal. I got pulled over. There was a Navy man. If you know anything about Annapolis, that's where the Naval Academy is. Mm -hmm. This Navy guy in full uniform got pulled over with Pardon me. Man. These turban people are fine. And they get through. So I'm pissed. I mean, I'm late for my plane anyway. I'm thinking, man, this is not what I needed right now. Racist. No, I'm telling a funny story. Okay, good. So anyway, so I turn around and I look. And I'm, it's time I, for a break, so we're going to take it. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. This is when I realized that they pulled over the Navy guy. So I, I was too busy worried about my situation. Like, Why am I fucking here? And, and oh, it pissed me off. I'm going to miss my plane. And I turned around, and there was this Navy guy in full uniform. And he could sense I was angry, and he had the greatest line. He said, uh, I guess they're only pulling over the best-looking people today. <laughs> <laughs> and it eased my troubles. I wasn't pissed off anymore. And I, went, I guess you're what right. Randy man. didn't know is that man was gay, and he was trying to get Randy in the bathroom for a little pickle tickle. You mean I missed an opportunity? I'm joking. But no, I just thought that was cool. Here's a dude who should have been pissed off, yeah. more so than me, and he had the great line to just disarm the whole situation. Yeah, yeah they must be pulling over the best looking people today. And yeah. I went, and I, I did. I thanked him. I'm like. Thank you. So I was really pissed off. I guess, yeah, I can tell you what. He goes, but dude, this happens to me all the time. I'm I like, think they were... went, even in, in uniform, you get pulled over. He goes, every time I get pulled over in uniform. Wow. That's crazy. It was probably anti racial profiling day. Let's get the opposite of people that we yeah, normally would profile. Exactly. And I, I could I could have gone through in a turban with like a strap bomb on. Mm -hmm. like, ah, let's go there. Yeah, because we don't want to offend him. He's yeah, exactly. not American. No, you want to hear something white. funny? But when I lived in, uh, apparently there's no Mexicans in Maryland because when I lived in Maryland, everybody <laughs> thought I was Iranian. So I'd be, I'd go to work every. I worked at Best Buy at the time. I go to work and I'd be like, you know, nah, I'm working my day, walking around, and then someone would like, hey, come over here, and I'm like, what? Like oh, these people want to talk to you, and it was like Iranians or Iraqis. <laughs> like, Shabba did you want I'm like, I have no fucking. I'm Mexican. I have no idea what you're saying. But that was everybody thought I was like Iraqi or something over there. It was weird. You know, it's ironic. And so they could have pulled over a Mexican and he wouldn't have been able to talk to him either. Exactly, because I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. And Can I ask stop, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to take another break here real quick because this is turning into a full episode. So we'll be right back with more of the La Gloria Cubana Series R. Best cigar Esteli. I've had in days. This is a great cigar. Call 
Car 55, this is Dispatch. We have a 211 in progress in your area. Please respond. Dispatch, this is Car 55. We are in the vicinity and on our way. Did you say this was a 211? Yes, 211, robbery in progress. Hmm, 211. That reminds me of that great cigar by Esteban Carreras, the 211. Man, I could go for one of those right now. Uh, okay, whatever. We have a farmer in the area whose goats are getting stolen. And this is where it gets weird, saying it's a chupacabra. A chupacabra? Are you kidding me? Man, that's another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. Whoa, hold on now. Let's keep our focus here. I mean, this guy called in a 187 on his prize-winning goat, Mary. 187? You're killing me here. Yet another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. I just think this guy sounds crazy. Yeah, you might just want to call in a 5150 and call it a day, you know what I mean? 5150, that's it. You call a paddy wagon, I'm turning around and going to the Calypso Cigar Shop in Richardson for an Esteban Carrera cigar. Hey, that sounds great. Can I join you? Absolutely. Esteban Carrera cigars. It'd be a crime not to smoke them. We're back. Yes, we've been rambling today, but hopefully they're... That's what we do, though. They're musing... Amusing ramblings. Amusings of musings. Yes. Yeah. We are kind of the musers of musers, if you think about it. Decent burn. It's a little off, but... I've know. not had to relight it or anything. I haven't nope. smoked as it's, much. And cigar. there's a good amount of smoke coming off yeah. of that. I don't know if you can really tell yeah. on the video here. Let's see if I can get it. Nah, not really. There's a decent amount of smoke coming off of it, though. But it's, uh, it's tasty. I mean, I wouldn't say it's complex. It's just a tasty cigar. No, it just tastes good the whole way. And like I said, I compared it to the Tempest, and while that's my favorite cigar, if you think about the Tempest, it's not complex either. It's just balls to the wall, flavor in your face the whole time. Which and that's is weird because I love complex cigars, but I never got that with the Tempest. I just yeah. like the taste of it. And that's why I liked the Nico Rustico so much, is that it was you know a lot of flavor all the way through. So I would compare this, you know, a lot to the Nico Rustico but in a different way. This is a different kind of flavor. No, this tastes more like the Tempest than it does. Yeah, it does, yeah. It really has a Tempest taste. And, yes, I'm wearing an Alec Riley shirt, although you can't tell that, but I am. There you go. Now you can I'm tell. wearing an Office Space shirt. I love Office it's Space. It's my stapler. My stapler. <laughs> it's a red line. And, uh... and, you know, they didn't make this color red line stapler until the movie became popular. Yeah, yeah. It was just the, the normal black. Another movie filmed in Dallas. I thought it was filmed in Austin. Uh, the Chotskys thing is in Austin, and The Office actually is in Austin. But uh, if you watch the beginning, remember when he's in the traffic jam and he's stopping, and the guy with the walker is passing him? That is 635 going west or east, just before the tollway. Okay. If you look over there, you'll see the double tree. Oh. That's exactly where that was shot. Okay. And if you've ever been in traffic there, which I have, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. And and so yeah. So a lot of it was filmed in Dallas, but most of it was in Austin and such. But it's a great movie. Texas movie. Yeah. yeah. And it's very funny. Well and Mike Judge. Mike Judge, like we said. Texas dude. King of Hill. Everyone said was Garland. It was Arlen. They just took off the G and the B. But he said on David Letterman that it's Richardson. He lived in Richardson and that's what he based King of the Hill on. Yep. And that's where the lovely Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge is. I love how we always tie things. We're so good at just bringing it all back Bring to it the back. center. Yep. We do that every episode. And you know why? We're pros. So if you were wanting to order some of these, because by the time this airs, no, not really. But you'll uh, carry them Possibly by the time we yeah. yeah. Then uh, how would you order those? Randy. You would call 972-761-9903, and we'll do a special, but you have to mention that you heard it on this episode. If you buy four, we'll give you one free. Sweet. And I have to relight, because I talk too much. You do that. Yappy, yappy. I didn't have to with the Cuban that we smoked from the same undisclosed location. Yep. Which was delicious, by the way. Monte Cristo. Petite. Your house in Monterey is beautiful. Edmundo. Thank you. I love your house in Monterey. Yeah. Your dad needs to have us over more often. Mm -hmm. Dude, I, I think that's actually something. I think that's where he's going to retire. I want to tease something knowing that it'll never happen. Okay. But maybe if we get it out there, we can get a groundswell and maybe make it happen. What's that? Now, Robert Plant of Let's Up has <laughs> listened to this show. Yeah. Via, via your dad, via, yeah. via, whatever. He yeah. lives in Austin, and he is a frequent... Um, 
contributor to the music scene over there because yeah. then he, you know, he's a music guy. He yeah. lives and breathes music. Yeah. So he does a lot there to promote that side of it over in Austin. He does classes for teaching songwriting and stuff like that. Because anyway, he's the great Robert yeah, Bryant. Yeah, my dad got to meet him, and they had a, a pretty long conversation. And my dad was like, yeah, my, you know, I smoke cigars. My son smokes cigars, and he does this podcast. And he got on the YouTube and showed my dad the, the video of one of ours and listened to a little bit of it. And he's like, oh, man, that's cool, man. I like the chicks. They're hot. You know, so we've got the videos with the hot so chicks. So Robert Plant has <laughs> listened to us talk. Mm-hmm. So he owes us the favor in letting us interview him. That would and, be great. Uh, and uh, paid, you know, Robert Plant, if you know anything about him, is a huge... I mean, Elvis, Buddy Holly, you know, that stuff is his... 50s music. Yeah. That's where he got going. And uh, so we're trying to finagle Pedro, Pedro's heritage, in the landing of Robert Plant interview. And i got to tell you, part of me thinks it's going to happen. I, don't I would know. love for that to happen. Yeah. And if it does... Major score for us. I will never have to masturbate to Jennifer Aniston again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, dude, Robert Plant was on our show! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he will because it's Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, probably. Yeah, she's a lot better looking than Robert Plant. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Robert. You're awesome, but Jennifer Aniston. Come on our show, and we'll see what happens, though. I'm not making any promises, but come on our show would be the coolest thing. And, it would be know, very dude, cool. we would be so Chris Farley. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to have, remember, I'd remember, have... remember when you recorded uh, Stare to Heaven? That, yeah, was that was awesome, awesome. man. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would, you know, it'd be one of those interviews though where I'd want to talk about other stuff, but at the yeah. same time you got to mention a couple things. Oh God, yes. Well, I'd want to talk about his love for fifties music because Pedro would be there. Yeah. And I mean, he's been on Letterman and Leno and everything ad nauseum talking about how much Elvis influenced him and the time he met times he met Elvis. Yeah. You know, I don't remember if I said it on air, but there was a time where Zeppelin actually went to an Elvis concert and. Elvis's band screwed up an opening, and Elvis stopped and said, uh, by the way, Led Zeppelin's in the audience. Let's let them know that we know what we're doing up here. <laughs> and I thought that was the coolest thing ever, that Elvis would stop a show to say, uh, this band's important. I want to impress them. Yeah. So okay, that's dude. cool. And, man, we're... I know. Oh, uh, maybe not this close. Maybe that close. To, mm. Okay, this close. Mm. Yeah. But there's it. a chance. Yeah. I know that he's heard us talk more than we've heard him talk exactly. <laughs> on this podcast. Exactly. So, Terry had to get on that shit, man. Yeah, I need to work on that. And That'd Pedro be... is the ba- uh, avenue, man. The catalyst, uh-huh. as it were. And Pedro has said, he oh. loved me on that podcast, but he isn't going to know what to say either, because yeah. he said he spent hours trying to learn the solo to Stairway to Heaven on his guitar. I mean, so... I, I talked to I texted Pedro when that happened, that whole thing happened. He was like, holy crap, hell yeah, I'd be on that. <laughs> he was like all excited. I'm like, yeah. He was like, but what if my dad? What if Robert Plant doesn't like my dad? I'm like, dude, he loves '50s music. <laughs> he loves your dad. There's yep. not a problem. Yep. So that would be the most way, insane. Uh, thing it would be ever. way cool. Yeah. Okay. If we could interview Jennifer Aniston, Natasha Henstridge, Jill Wagner, or Robert Plant, I'm gonna pick Robert Plant. Sorry. Yeah, I'll go Robert Plant <laughs> all the way. Any I mean, day I, I, you know, freaking week. He was so much more of part of my life growing up than mm-hmm. any of the other people that you mentioned. And Although uh, I love yeah. all those other people that I mentioned. I do too. I, you know, I hated Jennifer Aniston for a long time, man. I just couldn't stand her character on Friends. And, you know, you gotta... But that just tells you that she's a good actress because she played that character really yeah, well. She did. That's not who she is. And, um, you know, but I just... I couldn't stand... That character was the, the person in high school that I hated the most. <laughs> But well, her character is also the one that changed the most. I yeah. mean, she really grew as a character. Oh, and yeah. Got you watch like season four on. She's the most confident. She's the most... Yeah. Got her shit together. And the character that changed probably the least was uh, Chandler, you know, because he was still Chandler. <laughs> now, the character that changed the least was Phoebe, and Phoebe never needs to even be on that show. Yeah. Any Phoebe... And, the, you know, as much as I love Paul Rudd, my one of my favorite comedy guys... I hate that he's the one that married Phoebe. <laughs> really? Paul Rudd? Come on. I liked that better than that. Uh, and I think Hank Azaria is Hank another Azaria, hilarious yeah. dude. Yeah. So she had Hank Azaria and Paul Rudd, Phoebe's character. Yep. Mm. Every now and then, though, she, they did give her a good line. So yeah. Know. But, uh, yes, we're dudes, and we're talking about friends. But, you know, and that's the thing about that show that was so brilliant, was that they kind of represented every facet of 
that generation of people. They had, you know, mm-hmm. the they had the nerd, which was Chandler. Mm-hmm. They had the the, uh, the the tough jock guy, the tough jock guy, which was Joey. Joey. They had the really off the wall, weird hippie chick that was Phoebe. Mm-hmm. They had the obsessive compulsive, you know, um, chick that didn't really know she was hot that was Monica. Mm-hmm. And then they had the the cheerleader. Mm-hmm. And then and then they had the nerd that was a cheerleader. Or that was Ross. Ross. Yeah, Ross. the nerd that was just the straight up nerd. And we talked about it a little while ago. That's probably why we brought it to air. Was dude, that show came out in '94. I was 24, you were 23. That show represented our lives at the time. Yeah. We were going through the... Never had a show affected me so much in that I was watching my life played out on TV. And I felt like I was friends with those people because I knew people exactly like that. Yep. They're but, trying to get in their career. What are they going to do? Who are they going to love? They just had much better apartments. Yeah. Yeah. In <laughs> Manhattan. Exactly. How do you, Which you would never have that. <laughs> No. Well, they explained it that it was rent control, but yeah, never I get that. Yeah. Whatever. And then, this is what I thought was funny: is Monica's apartment was rent control, and it was a beauty. Yeah. Uh, Joey and Chandler's place was a dump <laughs> in the same <laughs> building, and it wasn't rent control apparently because they never mentioned that it's rent control. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how could you have two separate buildings like that? I don't know. Yeah. Or, uh, apartments in the same it building. It was a TV show. That's how. That was a TV show. It was a TV show. It wasn't life. It was a TV show. You mean Ross and Rachel aren't going to come over and hang out with me ever? Nope. Not going to happen. Damn. Are you sad I guess now? I'll put away the pretzels. <laughs> I was kind of hoping they were going to come over. Nope. Never going to happen, my friend. Why does my Jennifer Aniston dreams always get ruined? Kirk ruined it on a comment on YouTube. Now you just ruined it. So geez. No. That's life, buddy. So That's um, what people say. Yep. So we are going to riding have... high in May, April and shot down in May. So we're not going to finish this on air because we are coming to the hour but, point. But um, this is a this is one of the best cigars we've done in a long time. Very surprised mm-hmm. by how good this cigar is, and I don't know if I guess the rep is just really storing them great, but yeah, it's yummy. Yeah, we dudes. just got it yesterday, and it was in his car. So that is a yummy, tasty cigar, and I would definitely be and visiting will, this again. I will finger burn this cigar. Yep, it's that me good. too. Thank you for putting up with our. Stupid stuff. Our rantings. Yep. And uh, if you like and comment on Facebook or retweet and comment on Twitter, mm-hmm. like or comment on iTunes, mm-hmm. like or comment on Podomatic, what he said. you will be entered in our drawing for the Perfecto Cigar Holder. We have two of them, mm-hmm. so we will have two winners. Yep. And the winner will be announced on episode 36. And the Perfecto Cigar Holder is a great product. You can clip it onto most things, and you can hold your cigar there. If you're a golfer or any kind of sports guy, you can take it with you. It's made of You had nylon. it on your uh, utility yep. shelf. It's made of nylon, so it will not burn and melt like most cigar holders. Like ABS or anything like that. Exactly. And you can clean it. it smells great. It doesn't smell like cigars. And um, it's just a fantastic thing. You take it out there, mow the yard, do whatever you want with it. Yep. Clip it anywhere. You can use it as an ashtray, flick it out, doesn't smell weird. It's an awesome product. It's a cool, cool thing, and if you win it, you'll be happy. Yep, you will. So do all those things that I just said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so check out perfectocigarholder.com, and if you want to order one, they're about 20 bucks. And what's our last guy, Cuban? Uh, um, yep, go to cigarsofabanos.com, cigarsofabanos.com and, and uh, there's some great... Uh, they got great prices over there, and they're legit Cuban cigars. They'll tell you the box codes and the numbers and everything. And, and shout out to those. Jeff Hershiser and uh, yep, Hersh- Jeff Hershauer. Shower, I'm sorry. Got Ricky in and, uh, uh, Cincinnati. Uh, uh, Kirk from Cigar Poolside Cigar Reviews in Arizona. Anthony Tasson, as always, gives yep. us the comments on uh, Google Plus. Uh, Jeff, or Holly Zimmerman, mm-hmm. and uh, anyone else yep. who has commented. We love you. Thank you a bunch. So check us out on iTunes, Podomatic, Spreaker, um, iTunes. Uh, Facebook and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter. And as always, it's been great smoking with you. Love you, Brandon. Love you, Randy. Awesome smoke, guys. Great Seriously. smoke. Very surprised you by up this. One. Yeah. I can't wait for my next one. Bye, TV land. <laughs>